Two of my biggest interests over the past year or so have been memes and media preservation. So a video about me related lost media was kind of an inevitability. My hope is that shedding light on some of these topics will get some of them found, or at the very least, start a search for them, seeing as at least a few topics in this video are so obscure they haven't really been searched for at all. The first and probably most infamous example of me lost media I'm going to discuss is Kuruma de DS, translating to DS in the car, a 2012 Japan exclusive game which not only featured Mii's but also the synthesized voices that are most well known for their role in the Tomodachi series. <laughs> This game is infamous for its lost media status. You see, the reason this game is lost isn't actually because the game itself is difficult to obtain. In fact, it's exceptionally easy to find, and plenty of ROMs exist for it online that you can download at any time. So what's the issue? It comes in when you actually try to play the game. Kuruma de DS was only intended to be played while connected to an Eclipse GPS via Bluetooth, specifically the AVN SZX04i, SZ04, SZ04IW, ZX04I, Z04I, Z04IW, ZX03I, Z03I, Z03IW, ZX02I, and the Z02I. If you can't connect the game to any of these specific GPS models, then it simply cannot be fully played. Kuruma de DS allowed you to remotely control your GPS through your DS, letting you search and set destinations with the stylus, as well as displaying things such as a speedometer. There were also activities in the game, such as local quizzes, tourist information, and memories. In local quizzes, you would receive a question relating to the area you were driving through, and each passenger would have to pick one of the four answers. After everyone had selected, their correct answer would be shown and explained, and whoever got the answer correctly would be awarded points. You could also use your accumulated points to buy souvenirs, which as I understand it, you could use to earn even more bonus points. Memories appear to be exactly what they sound like, a way for you to write memories of your drive on the map to record and save them. This star marker, when tapped, would have a me caricature of a character related to the given prefecture give you information about famous places in the region. An example given in this article being Tokugawa Ieyasu, founder and first shogun of the Tokugawa Shogante of Japan appearing in Tokyo. This game also used Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. You were able to share your Mii as a traveling Mii and could encounter other people's traveling Mii's at Wi-Fi spots. You could even take quizzes with them about areas you've never been to, and apparently even listen to folk songs from their hometowns. The audio from the game could be broadcasted through the car's speakers, allowing everyone in the car to hear. And speaking of the audio from this game, rips of the soundtrack are available, however there are only four background tracks, being Background Music Title 1, Background music Omoid and background music CMNT1. However, in some gameplay footage, undocumented tracks can be heard. I personally looked through the game's files and couldn't find these tracks, so I can only assume that since they would only play when connected to the GPS, their data wasn't stored in the game but rather on the GPS itself. A sentiment I often see being repeated is that you would have to buy an entire car to get one of these GPSs. This is not the case. You can find them for sale on places like Yahoo Auctions for a price that translates to around $250 USD with the original SD card, which to my understanding you cannot replace because it contains important files. As I understand it, the GPS's are compatible with any car as long as they can fit in the dashboard. But let's just say that you did buy this GPS, and the game, and you were able to install it in your car properly. If you aren't located within Japan, you'd be outside of the intended region and wouldn't be able to do much, as there wouldn't be any locations programmed in. The possibility of this game becoming playable via emulator seems to be the only way anyone outside of Japan could ever experience it fully. 
As I understand it, the only thing preventing the base game itself from running on an emulator is the Bluetooth module it had for connecting to the GPS not being accounted for. Considering a game like Pokemon Typing Adventure which also used Bluetooth was made somewhat playable, I'm sure a workaround could technically be made for the game itself if a person with the time and knowledge to do so could be found. The GPS, however, is a different story. I'm no GPS connoisseur, but in all my research I was unable to find a single example of a GPS device being emulated virtually. Probably because, well, what reason would anyone ever have to do that outside of this hyper-specific scenario? But yeah, in conclusion, will we ever get more slash better documentation of the game? Sure, I think that's very possible. In fact, fellow MeTuber Emmy somewhat recently uploaded a video in which she bought a used copy of the game that had save data on it from the previous owner, and we got to see even more footage. She also mentioned possibly dumping the save file she obtained, and if she goes through with this, anyone who has a copy of the game could potentially put the file on their cartridge and be able to access the quizzes the previous user had unlocked, as well as anything else on the save file, which could be a huge step forward as far as preservation goes, even if the full game still can't be accessed. Will there ever be a point where this game is completely playable without needing to buy a GPS and then move to Japan or somehow falsify its location? Eh, maybe. I mean, one can certainly hope. But I'm not sure if there will ever be enough interest in the game for that to happen. Something I'd like to give a brief mention to is early or unreleased versions of Mii games, or Mii predecessors. I'm putting this all into one section because discussing unreleased versions of Mii games and media containing Mii's or their predecessors is actually quite a popular genre on YouTube, and there are many people who have already made wonderful videos on the subject, so I really don't have much to add. Plus, I feel like it doesn't quite fit into the theme of this video, as I'm more going over things that were freely available at some point but became obscure over time, whereas most of that content was never really meant to be seen by the public in the first place. Of course, it depends on the situation, but in the vast majority of cases, an early version of game will just be a less polished version of the final game. Like, for example, these relatively unknown screenshots of an incomplete version of Tomodachi Collection New Life I found while searching for a completely different image on Tinai. It's still a very interesting subject though, so I'll link some more in-depth videos on the topic in the description for you to check out if that interests you. After I published my first Mii merchandise video, I received a comment saying this, quote, Great video. There is actually another instance of Mii figures existing though. A while ago, during the Wii U era, Nintendo Minute hosted a contest through Twitter to have your Mii be custom 3D printed by a custom 3D printing service as a Mii racer figurine, driving the standard car on a road base. I was going to include a link to said video, but Nintendo have privated every Nintendo Minute episode. I'm still sad I never managed to get one. After I first received this comment, I did some digging to try to find this alleged Twitter giveaway. However, after very little success in my search, I kinda just stopped looking and forgot about it. That was until months later when I received this comment, saying, quote, I remember when Nintendo Minute did a contest where you could submit your Mii QR code and you could get a cool 3D printed version of your Mii riding a Mario Kart vehicle. That was so cool. I also remember back in the Wii U era, I think you could win a Mii mask, beanie, and glow stick. I wish I had one myself. It would be funny to wear. This user provided some new details, while also corroborating the original commenter's story, not to mention the new alleged Mii item, which we will get back to shortly. The combination of this new comment and me starting work on this video inspired me to start my search yet again. Nintendo Minute ended in 2021, and due to Nintendo's love of destroying their own content, they privated every single episode of Nintendo Minute around 2022. To this day, it appears that a large chunk of the podcast is still lost media. As for Twitter though, I don't believe there was ever a Nintendo Minute Twitter account, meaning the post would have likely been on the Nintendo of America account or on the accounts of one of the podcast hosts, Kit and Krista. However, when using Twitter's advanced search option, I was unable to turn up any results from any of the aforementioned accounts. So what's the deal? Was this alleged post deleted? Well, I think I have an answer to that, and it's probably not what you're expecting. After my long and agonizing search through hundreds of posts with keywords like me and giveaway, it started to become apparent that I was not going to find what I was searching for, so I knew what I had to do. Throwing all my social anxiety to the wind, I began the terrifying task of typing out one of the most important messages of my life. If I mess this up, this piece of media could be lost for the rest of time. With my delicately written inquiry, I went to contact Kit and Krista. Or just Kit, because Twitter literally paywalled message requests. Anyways, I sent my message to just Kit. Hello, I'm a YouTuber with a channel primarily focused on researching Nintendo products. 
I've been trying to track down all official Mii merchandise for archival purposes. In doing so, I've heard several accounts of Nintendo Minute doing a giveaway on Twitter during the Wii U era. Allegedly, fans could submit a QR code of their Mii for a chance to win a custom figure of their Mii as a Mii racer. I was wondering if you happen to remember anything about this? I've been trying to find images of any of the aforementioned Mii Racer figurines to no avail. Any input as to whether or not this story is true would be amazing. Thank you for your time. And... nothing. I waited a week without a word. He didn't even read my message. So, in my desperation, I decided to reach out one more time by adding both Kit and Krista in a tweet this time. And... Hello, do you mean these? Now Kit actually responding with an image is incredible, but these Mii's are clearly Kit and Krista's, rather than the Mii of some random individual who won a giveaway. I was still left with more questions, so I inquired. Hey, thanks so much for your response. I've only heard secondhand accounts, so I can't confirm whether or not this is what people have been referring to, however the descriptions I've heard certainly do line up. If you don't mind me asking, do you remember there ever being a giveaway involving Mii Racer figurines? Or could some people be misremembering? My memory of it is honestly a bit fuzzy. I know it was discussed, but not sure if it was actually moved forward. There were some issues with the figures themselves. It's hard to tell from the photo, but these figures are made of this sort of sandstone material and are extremely fragile. My feeling is it was discussed but didn't move forward, but I could be wrong about that. Sorry, I don't remember more about it. If you think about it, this answer actually makes a lot of sense. If a giveaway like this happened, how could every single trace of it disappear in such a relatively short amount of time? You would expect at least one tweet talking about it, but the only mention of it I could find was in those two comments. Which begs the question, if this giveaway didn't happen, how did those two random people on the internet come up with this information? Well, I have a theory. I believe that at some point on the podcast, someone must have mentioned that they were experimenting with slash thinking about doing a giveaway with these Mii Racer figurines and some people likely misremembered or misunderstood it as an announcement for said giveaway rather than them just throwing the idea around. Especially since the first commenter mentioned hearing about it from the podcast, rather than actually seeing the alleged tweet. However, I think the only way we could completely confirm this theory is if we could find the episode in which the statement could have been made. But for the time being, I would say this mystery is mostly solved, thanks in large part to Kit's help. As for the other giveaway mentioned in this comment, I was able to find a few people who won, and oddly enough, it seems that people were not actually given what they were promised in this initial tweet announcing the giveaway. This user said, quote, Prize from at Nintendo America. Too bad they didn't send me what I really won. I was looking forward to that meme mask. Other users also tweeted about winning. However, it seems no one actually got a meme mask, or one of the other promised items for that matter, a glow stick. Although it appears people did receive the promised beanie and this extra lanyard, so they weren't totally let down. While it is odd that the proper prizes were seemingly never given out, I'm fairly confident that the masks they were going to give out were likely the same ones from the Wii U's launch party, as all the other items promised in this giveaway also appeared at the Wii U's launch party. While I was looking for information on the two prior entries in this video, I came across this post made by the official Nintendo of America account, advertising a Tomodachi Life personality quiz available on their website. Now of course, this is Nintendo America we're talking about, so clicking on the link won't take you anywhere anymore. In most cases like this, especially on such a high traffic area like the official Nintendo website, reaching old content like this is as easy as putting the link into the Wayback Machine. However, when I did just that, I came up with nothing. Somehow, this one page had not been saved by the Wayback Machine at all. I even tried checking several other website preservation sites, but came up with nothing. Since the page hasn't been archived, the only way we can learn more info about it is through accounts from other users, which luckily there are a good amount of. There were versions of the quiz in both the Nintendo UK and US websites. The only difference I can see from the screenshots are the names of the personalities, which are different in different regions. However, I imagine the questions are relatively similar, although wording could possibly be changed as it is in the game. These screenshots alone don't really provide sufficient information about the quiz itself though, as they're all just people sharing their results. However, when you search for this quiz on YouTube, you find a video by the user Neon Pop Style AJ, in which they documented themselves taking the entire quiz. Today, I thought I would take the Tomodachi Me Personality Test. This video is by far the best documentation of the quiz we have, as it pretty much shows the entire thing, albeit only the US version. It's actually pretty crazy. If this random 10 year old Animal Jam YouTuber hadn't decided to record an arbitrary video on this Tomodachi Life personality quiz, it would have been pretty much completely lost to time. 
I consider it very unlikely that this test will ever be found in full, despite the good documentation, which is a real tragedy. Although, seeing as we know so much about this quiz, it did give me the idea to try to recreate it on my own website. It would be impossible to make a one-to-one -one replica, however, I think we have enough info and screenshots that it's totally plausible to simply fill in the blanks and create a fairly faithful replica. I haven't done anything like this yet, but I think I know what my next project will be. I'll be sure to update in a pinned comment whenever I decide to go somewhere with this idea. I briefly covered this DVD in my meme merchandise video, and I don't have too much more to say about it, but I'll go over it again just for the sake of encouraging the search a bit more. This piece of media relates to a tie-in me game for the Japanese idol group AKB48, who have an extensive history with both tie-in games in general and Nintendo, even appearing as me fighters in this advertisement for Super Smash Bros for Wii U. AKB48 plus me is a simple rhythm game in which you join the group and perform with them, all the characters, including the girls and the player, of course, being depicted as Miis. At some point during the game's run in stores, a set was sold that contained the AKB48 Plus Me game, an AR card, seven photo cards of some of the members of the group posing with their Miis, and this DVD containing video clips that could be played in 3D on the 3DS, this DVD becoming the piece of lost media in question. This blog post, which is basically the only source of information I have on this DVD, states that there are two clips on the disc. The first being a roughly 35 second clip of some of the girls performing a dance, and the second being from some sort of interview or something where the girls are talking, which is roughly 3 minutes. There is actually a low quality recording of the first video on YouTube, it being a recording of the 3DS screen taken on some sort of phone or camera. Still though, the second clip is totally lost, and we still don't have the original files for either of them. If said files were obtained, this would allow anyone to view the clips on their 3DS in 3D. I have seen some listings for the disc, and while none that I could find are active currently, I generally think it's very possible that these files could be found. Back when the Check Me Out channel for the Wii was initially in service, countless memes were distributed via the channel, most made by average Wii owners, but others even being distributed by Nintendo themselves. Most, if not all of said memes, have become lost since the channel's official closure in 2013. Of course, it's impossible to recover every single me uploaded to the channel, however, since users were able to download memes from the Check Me Out channel onto their consoles, many memes could potentially be recovered if people simply checked their Wiis for any Check Me Out channel memes, backed them up via the homebrew application Save Game Manager GX, and then shared this data. So if you have a Wii which hasn't been reset since at least 2013, and it's modded so you can share them, why not check and see if you have any interesting memes? You can identify memes that are from different consoles by their blue pants, and special memes by their golden pants. I'd say special memes are a bit more of a priority to document considering they're official, but that's just my take. I discovered this search from yodakiller 3000s video on the topic, which I recommend you watch for yourself, link in the description. But in short, upon the first anniversary of Nintendo's mobile game Mitomo, they announced that they would be creating a mosaic out of hundreds of different users' Mi photos, and that they could be submitted on the Mitomo website. Unfortunately, this particular page, as well as the page containing the final image, were not saved by the Wayback Machine or any other archival services I've tried. We do have lower quality images of the mosaic, both the English and Japanese versions, however the full images are yet to be found. This search seems fairly simple. The image was publicly available for, one can assume, a good amount of time, and I'm pretty confident that many people downloaded it during that time. So it's really just a matter of digging up someone who has the image, which, with enough eyes, should hopefully be easy. This last entry is a bit of a stretch to call lost media, however, it's something I'm really invested in, so I'm including it anyways. During the last month of the We Know Ma channel being up in April of 2012, they did a giveaway via the channel where you could win a custom keychain of your Mii, as shown in this promotional image. Apparently, 100 people per week were able to win. I'm not sure exactly how many weeks this went on, however the main relevant factor is that this item was given out in very limited quantities. As a result of this, information about the keychain is rather scarce. We have some promotional images, however pictures of any keychains received by channel users have never surfaced. I imagine at least a few hundred people received these keychains, so like a lot of the other cases in this video, it's just a matter of finding someone who still has one so that they can share images. But honestly, I'd say this case isn't too bad considering we still have the promotional material, which is a pretty good approximation of what it would have looked like. 
As I close out this video, I would like to mention that if anyone is interested in the progress of any of the cases mentioned, I created a page on my website where you can check their statuses, as well as submit your own findings and information. And since we're talking about my website, if you check out the Lost Media page and you think it's cool, I recommend you look around the rest of my site. I know when a YouTuber talks about making a website, it's usually the context of a sponsorship for a website builder or generally just a site that isn't really meant to stand on its own, but in my case web design has become quite a passion, and my website is just as important to me as my channel. It's something I created simply for the love of web design and sharing my work. You can find a variety of things on my site with a similar tone to the content on this channel. Like a page about Mies, including several full PDF scans of Mii books from my collection, a lot of which were featured in my Mii merchandise videos. A page of games I made which you can play in your browser, my full art portfolio, and even a page where you can commission me to draw you something, or possibly make you a custom plush or figurine in the future, I'm not sure. It's not a static site, I'm working on it pretty much all the time, so who knows what it'll look like by the time this video is out. Also, if web design interests you, and you're interested in making your own site, or even just learning about the tools to do so, I have a list of resources on my site as well. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video up until this point. I really appreciate all of the support I've been getting on my channel and my website, and I hope that you like the new look I have going on for this video. It was initially more time consuming, as I had to do everything by hand in Blender, but I think it's worth it because it looks much more professional than Mitomo, and now that it's all set up, it's actually a huge time saver. Anyways, that's enough yapping from me. Have a great rest of your evening.